Hi, I'm Rebecca the Prairie Gal from the great prairie state of Illinois, and welcome to another one of my prairie adventures. Today we are visiting the Fox River Trolley Museum, which is located in South Elgin, Illinois, about 25 miles west of Chicago on the Fox River. So if you're ready, let's go. Here at the Trolley Museum, they have quite a few trolleys, but they also have other types of equipment. Some switching engines, a crane, and some really cool old elevated train cars. This car says Shoreline Route Evanston. And it says North Shoreline. We're here in November and it's actually an incredibly beautiful day today. It feels more like September. It's like 75, which is quite unusual for Illinois in November. Here's an old Illinois Central caboose. These signs here explain how the cars are powered. So originally they were powered by electricity from the tracks, I believed, and then they added here those poles so they could run electricity to the lines that run over the top of the cars. But here's a, this trolley here in this picture shows poles on top of the car. So I'm not sure which ones were strictly just track powered cars and which ones could run with wires above this is the main station for the museum right now they're getting ready for their Christmas season where they do their own rendition of the Polar Express and um, gives children an opportunity to meet Santa Claus and have hot cocoa and some cookies and ride on the rails to the North Pole. So that'll be gearing up in a few weeks just after Thanksgiving and that's why you see some of the evergreens here on the boarding platforms. The museum is located right on the Fox River and their track runs, I think it's two miles along the river. This tree is a rather old tree. Probably probably 300 years old would be my guess. I'll go down here and check out this building and this little engine. This building here is one of their more recent acquisitions for the museum. Um, it had been scene where I used to see it was in Wayne, Illinois. It was actually in someone's backyard being used as a shed and they were going to tear it down but instead uh, it was given to the museum and it's going to be displayed here at the museum as it was intended and I'm going to walk up there and see what the sign says. It's a little bit more history about this building. So here we go, this is the Wayne Station and it originally served the Chicago, Aurora and Elgin Interurban Line and was originally located on the west side of the right-of-way which is now the Illinois Prairie Path uh, near Army Trail Road in the village of Wayne. Uh, it went into service in 1903 and this is their newest building so they're going to be restoring it I'm guessing to what it looked like in 1903. 
I know they have the engine here on the front of these elevated cars, but I think that's just for moving the cars around when they're not powered on. So I know these elevated cars run on their own with electricity. So we're going to walk down to the barn where they're actually doing some restoration work. See what they're doing in there. Just have to be just have to be rather careful as to not trip. I am walking near the railroad tracks. Hi everyone, I'm here with Joe and he's a volunteer here at the museum. <laughs> and what sorts of projects have you worked on? And well, there's just so many changes since uh, I got involved in 1976. So uh, we've been, we're just trying to get our train together for Polar Express. We've got mechanical issues that we've kind of resolved but not resolved. <laughs> resolved to live with them. Uh, the fellows have been clearing brush. We had a lot of track put in, or a lot of ties put in on the main line. This is not the main line down here during the year. Uh, they've been working in the car barn on the 4000 series cars and uh, every time you open up something you find more that has to get done. So that's that's a part of it too. So, so you're saying all because you're a museum, you're also a real working railroad. Oh yes, yes. So all the that's the thing that you have to to let our members and the public know that this is real. This is not a model railroad. It's real stuff. It's real it takes heavy. Takes hard work. And uh, you know you have to be very careful around it too. So. Right. Uh, I've been working on, you know, number five got repainted. Oh, that looks very pretty. Maybe we could walk down there and take a look sure, at it? Sure. Alright, so we're uh, up at, with the uh, orange engine. Number five. Number five. This car is, I'm only about four months older than it is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this engine was purchased by the railroad in 1946 to replace the two electric locomotives that uh, were doing the, the freight operation, hauling the coal to the hospital and hauling the pigs to Kerbers and things like that. Now, did it run on this line? Oh, I, yes, it yes, did. it did. So this is a piece that's actually original yes, to the to line. This railroad, right. That's really cool. And uh, the railroad, when it was purchased, uh, shortly after that, uh, Bob DeYoung bought the railroad. <laughs> And uh, his, I gotta keep this right, this is his daughter's son-in-law. So he's a great grandson, I guess. He provided the funds for this repainting and uh, they took the, it down to bare metal. So there was a lot of prep work on it. All right, which side is the front? Or the it don't front matter. Is, happens to be that end. Oh. That's because you have to know which way it, it is. Oh, they got the horns on this side. Yes. Well, yes. The, the horns were re restored, were put back in. Uh, they're like the original horns. I don't think, I don't believe they are the original horns, but they are the one. There's a pipe coming out there. Yeah, to see it. That's where there was a whistle. Oh. And when this locomotive was originally delivered in 1946, that's all it had was a whistle. Huh. They soon discovered that they needed horns, so they got horns. Another thing that we've restored to it is its bell. Oh, the bell. Well, that's cool. You know, that, that works pneumatically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, when they redid it, they, the, the lettering is actually vinyl. The original lettering uh, was hand painted by a fellow that uh, liked to drink a lot, and the more he drank, the better he was Oh, up. that's funny. But anyway, and uh, we had repainted this once when we got it in 2001, or before we got it. It was, it was here from 1946 until 
1973, if I remember correctly. That's uh, in 71, the, the state hospital converted from coal to natural gas, and, and we, the museum, in its first uh, reiteration, was uh, a tenant on the line. Well, since our landlord was going out of business, we had to buy the railroad, but we couldn't buy the locomotive. So the, he leased and then eventually sold the locomotive to Chicago Gravel Company, which was located in Spalding, sort of in Elgin. And so it worked there for 27 years. And when they closed that pit and got out of shipping uh, stone by rail, it became available and the company, the land company that bought the locomotive, or bought the whole property, donated the locomotive to us. And they allowed them to repaint it because they had painted it a rusty color. Now the orange, that would have been the original color? Well, this is actually, this is the, night from 1955. When it came, it was a light blue, which I think more or less faded into gray. We have uh, a few photographs. We don't have any color photographs of it in that paint scheme. We have black and white. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we, before they scraped all the paint off, some of us have taken pictures where the original paint was coming through, and it was it, it was a light blue, light but blue. I think it faded to a gray. So some people called it gray, but you know, all those almost all those people are not around anymore. Oh, uh, is it okay to climb up on it? Well, I can't climb up on it, but uh, could I climb up on it? If you can, the, station there. It, is it called a um, cab? Well, it, yeah, this is the cab. Mm -hmm. And it, it has two engines. Uh, we almost have the second engine working. There's still some bugs in it that we haven't quite straightened out yet. Although we put a lot into it. But, uh, and this is basically an industrial locomotive. It's not a road locomotive. Because it'll only go, it's only supposed to go 20 miles an hour. If it goes any faster, the, the two motors will fly apart because they're, they're going so fast because it's geared very low. It's only, with both engines, it's only rated at 300 horsepower. Wow. So, but it, it was fine for the job that it had to do here. Now, 4288 is our second L car. And it turns out that of all these 4000 series L cars that have been preserved, this may be the only one that has modernized windows on it. How, how, do you, how do you mean modernized? Well, you, if you look at that window there, which is the window for the ornament, uh, yes. it has a gasket seal around it. It's, you know, it's just a, a different kind of window than... Uh, and what, what, year, what, what year is this car? Uh, I want to say this one was 1922. Wow. But the, the CPA put a lot of money into it. Finding out, uh, he and his father have been working here, you know, replacing the sides. There was a lot of work that had to go into the frame right mm -hmm. in through here because we found when he took started working on the siding, we found that there was not enough support there. But you can see these windows are modern, more modern windows. It has. Uh, a modern standing window in it, and from uh, what I've heard, this is the only car that survived from the hundreds of cars CTA had that had this type of window in it. Wow. But here, you know, this is where they had to take out a section of wall, and then they're going to, they, they may even have a piece of yet, but they haven't put it up yet. Interesting. And what's this really nice green painted one car behind That's, it? That's uh, 4451, which uh, is closer to the way they were built. Uh, and it has all brass sash windows in it. 
they're all are square. Now, none of the windows are in the any in the cars right now, particularly in this car, because they're being We're taken done. apart so they can be cleaned up. But uh, on this car, everything below about here is all new steel. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, you know the the ends are all brand new. The cars had a, a bad habit of rusting out here, so instead of fixing it, they just built new walls, mm -hmm. new end pieces. If you look at 4288 next to, to it, you can see the the new steel that's gone in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, I unfortunately can't show you the the windows per se. Right. But uh, this thing. Starting at the roof, it has a completely new roof. Uh, a lot of the, all the parlance were repaired. New wood was put in there. New wood was put on the roof. Well, and it was insulated. But, so will uh, this car be ready to run in the spring? Uh, we'd like to, but uh, I, I would not put money on it. <laughs> it's, it's closer, this one will run. But it doesn't sure. have any seats in it or anything. Yet. Well, we have the seats. They're mm -hmm. out. The storage, the seat frames themselves have been repaired. Uh, finding out that a lot of the wiring has to be replaced and changed. And that's been ongoing. The air pipes have been, and the floor, again, they, they rust out at the floor level, so that's all new. Air piping has gone in. This car is, you know, waiting for its windows. Uh, see, I don't see huh, all the window frames that used to be here are have been taken away. And what's this car behind it? This a like, caboose? This is a caboose. This is technically the oldest car in the museum. Oh, I'm looking at the oldest car in the museum. And it hasn't been outside for decades. It's a I 130, it might, it's a Sioux line caboose. I thought it might be old because it has wood siding. Well, yes, but it was rebuilt many times oh. by the railroad. You know, cabooses were maintained. But this this one, uh, about 25 years ago, they started working on it, and then then they got other work, and <laughs> it never got finished. Oh. So it's been inside all this time, and so it turned out to be very much... Uh, so you're waiting for, for more volunteers. Yes, well, and it's... It's a lower priority. We need to have electric cars that will run and carry passengers. You know, it's just so hard to, to do anything. You know, this is kind of our shop area, but it's got supplies in it right now. You use uh, every inch of your space. Well, <laughs> not as well as we'd like to. This is 316. Years ago, the other end was rebuilt. Now this end is getting rebuilt. It needs a new floor. Ralph Taylor's started taking it apart. He rebuilt the other end. But uh, when you're spraying and sandblasting inside here, it's not a good environment to work in. But he's got it taken apart now. And uh, hopefully next year he'll get back and get the new wood in and get things up so you don't have to wire things up like this oh. to hold them up. There'll be some wood. Yeah, to that's screw just them into. temporary. <laughs> yeah. So, and this car actually did operate at the museum. I operated it here in the, oh. in the early '80s, and then it. And what's the year I, when this was? This is 1912. 1912. Yep. So now it's well over 100 years old. Oh yes, yes. I like all the wood in there. Yeah, and you know, again, if we, you know, with a little bit better shop facilities, we'd be able to. Get more done. Yeah, they don't build them like that anymore, do they? Oh. Classic. Well, you know, this, this car has not only a new roof insulation, it has a new floor. Uh, that right next to us, these, this is coming through flooring. And even though you're a museum, all your cars got to run with the to spec with safety and all that oh, stuff yes, because yes. you're carrying passengers. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, the first thing you do is uh, test your brake system before you go anywhere. Mm. But, uh, Brakes are good. This car served 
uh, up till it was taken out of service, was the most frequently operated car in the museum. We usually try and operate two cars at a time. And it says it actually stops at the White Sox baseball. Well, somebody <laughs> finally found that sign. I don't know where that sign was. We, we need cool. to make up some signs like that for yeah. our purposes. These cars were last used uh, on what, I guess they still run it, the Evanston Express. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, from the north-south line. Uh, run to Howard and then to get to Evanston and up to Willamette you would take a shuttle car. Mm -hmm. well, during the rush hours in the morning and the evening they would run Evanston Expresses and that was the last real duty of these cars. I can remember coming down to Chicago to do that. Here you can see this is one set of windows that uh, is left because there's some notations on it mm -hmm. <laughs> inside about where things are supposed to go. Uh, you can see that's the original brass sash, the standee, and then the lower window. Hmm. And we're fortunate we seem to have the parts to uh, fix up the windows because some of them were in bad shape. We're saving the old glass. Uh, if you look up inside here, you can see the holes in the ceiling that go up to the roof, which is where the ventilators were for fresh air vent ventiling, uh, fresh air coming in and out of the car. The car also needs to have its roof completed. It has uh, some, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. It's uh, a uh, snow and ice shield or water and ice shield mm -hmm. over it. And then we're going to, we have to put the canvas on, and then we have to put the boards for the trolley poles on and so on. One of our members has been working on the side doors here. They're, they, they're big side doors. One of the advantages of this car, these cars, compared to all our other cars, is that uh, they, they actually can be wheelchair accessible. Hmm. All, all of our other cars are pretty well limited because, you because board, the doorways because you, you are board, only 26 you, inches wide. And you usually board at a platform. Right. And these cars board at high level platforms. Mm -hmm. So the plan is to make the, these cars available when somebody in a wheelchair would like to take a ride. So That's that, a really I good idea. That's an exciting uh, improvement for us. Okay. Well, well, thank you, Joe, for the very fascinating well, tour of the barn. Glad to do it, and uh, I hope I hit all the, the high spots. <laughs> I think you did, yeah. A lot uh, of work here, a lot of yes. uh, volunteer yeah. hours spent, yeah. and you can see the, the craftsmanship and the workmanship is just excellent. So, we keep trying. <laughs>
keeps down the wear, spreads the wear out, and reduces the risk that the rail will shift out. Hmm. And then the ones that join the two rails together, what's that Now called? these are uh, what they call joint bars. And joint bars, we want to make sure to get the best support. So if you have any judgment and you have a hundred ties to change, make sure you change the ones under the joint bars. Hmm. Museum, they, they came out here in 1962 and they built a, a siding at what we call now Castlemere on the property that they bought. And looks like we're going to have some action here. And then I better get the off the tracks. The <laughs> museum started operations for the public by 1966. In 1966. And they went about, they didn't even go as far as the car is now. So by 1984, we created the Fox River Trolley Association, which runs the, the Fox River Trolley Museum. And that's the current Guys, the operator on here now. When I was in high school, they had several Aurora and Elkhart stored uh, 95th and Cottage at the Chicago Export Station Steaming Company. concludes our visit to the Fox River Trolley Museum. If you enjoyed today's video, please click on the thumbs up button. If you are new to this channel and would like to be notified when I have new videos uploaded, also tap down the subscribe button. So until next time, I'll see you on the prairie.